All right, y'all. Good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon. Um, well, y'all are getting contactless BA today. Um, why? Well, because my contacts are bothering me. I don't really like wearing my glasses because of this big glare in my glasses. So I'm going to try to keep keep low here because when I keep low, it doesn't talk. When I lift up, you see this big green in my eyes. So let's try to keep low. Um, we'll do the best we can. But you're definitely going to have to get contact with BA today. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to give you all time to come in. Let me go ahead and put my welcome to community check-in in. Welcome, 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 beloved. Come on in. Again, uh, we're not wearing contacts today. We're wearing glasses. I don't like to wear glasses on camera because this big uh, reflection of all these different lights in my face to try to make uh, this broadcast look professional. So I'm going to have to try to keep my head down a little bit so that you all can see my eyes. Um, I just wear my glasses through Sunday. I might preach in my glasses Sunday. Uh, come on in. Come on in. Do me a favor. Uh, let me talk to those who won't watch this live. If you're not watching this live, of course, you can go to whatever part is most meaningful to you. Um, <clears throat> a lot of you got kind of fast forward to the word and the prayer, and that's more than fine. It doesn't offend me at all. Uh, I just hope that something about this uh, check-in blesses you. For the rest of us, welcome, 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 welcome. I want to ask that you do me a favor, each and every one of you. Let's do it together. And that is, let's make sure we like and let's make sure we share. <clears throat> uh, Bryce and them won their playoff game. So they're now in the quarterfinals of the state championship. And there's not a whole lot of teams. So I don't want that to make you all think they're doing too well. Uh, but they're doing pretty good. Um, they won their, their um, I guess, play in against North Atlanta, 11 to six. And so, <clears throat> or 10 to six, 11 to six, one to two. Uh, so they will go the quarterfinals, semifinals and finals are back to back to back to back. Uh, and that will be Sunday at two. So I don't have to rush out of church, but I am gonna, as soon as I go, after, soon after I get out of church, I'll be going to, I think it's in Conyers. Um, it's in Conyers. So uh, <clears throat> pray for Bryce and his ultimate Frisbee team. Bryce did really well. Uh, and so we're looking forward to the quarterfinals of the uh, state championship for ultimate Frisbee. Now, uh, I'm doing all this talking. I've still yet to like and share. So let me, where am I? What in the world? This is not, let me go home. Over here. What? Why didn't I have a shortcut? Well, I don't like this at all. Let's try this. Um, no. Huh. Well. I think Facebook has changed on me. I'm not really sure how to share this. Oh, goodness. All right, let me see. Let me try. We're trying to like and to share you all. If you've not liked and shared, go ahead and like and share. And I am struggling right now. Okay, if I share, does it give me the option of where to share from? Okay, let's see. Okay, maybe I can go to one of you all's shared video. Nope, it just switched me. 
Uh, all right, you all, I'm going to try one more thing. Well, I'm not able to share right now. Well, no, if I go to the folk page and hit share, because I'm an administrator, it will only share it to the folk page. I can't get it to share to my page. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, if you all would do me a favor, make sure you like this live. Let me try one more thing. Who all shared? Let me see if I go to Mocha. No, oh my goodness. I got an idea. Let me see if I go to one of your pages, if it will. There we go. Okay. think I'm able to share. I went to one of your pages and shared. All right. So check in with me. Share now. Turn my volume down. I think that worked. <coughs> All right, let's say hello. Got hellos to say. Everybody said hello. I'm, I'm late. All right, we got good afternoon from YouTube from Amy Cowher. Good to see you today, Gerard Johnson. Hello to you and hello to you, Evelyn Ellis and Margaret White Darby. Hello to you. Um, good afternoon, Ms. Dina Self, and, um, good afternoon, Natalie Walker Jackson. It's good to see you, Lisa Norwood. Um, it's also good to see you, Tracy Dawson. This is my last week in Georgia. It was a pleasure meeting everyone in person, my Lord. Well, we definitely have been glad to have you, and we're blessed to have you, and glad you enjoyed your, um, Glad you enjoyed your trip here. So we'll be seeing you back in the morning. If you come in and check in with us in the morning, it's California time. Um, <clears throat> oh, thank you so much, Natalie Walker Jackson. I love the check-ins, keeps me motivated. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And um, I'm more than happy to do it. It blesses me, keeps me disciplined. Um, Good afternoon, uh, Miss Michelle Gordon. It's good to see you. We've got a praise report, beloved. Successful surgery for my brother Antonio Cowherd and Belinda Washington. Continue recovery prayers, please. Um, this is very true, Evelyn Ellis. Watching your family and friends compete is harder than competing yourself, especially when I have to sit in the stands and I can't talk. I can't talk to my child and just leave him to himself. Um, but it is. It's actually very, very difficult. Um, good afternoon to you, uh, Yolanda Ellis Taylor. And <laughs> and Tracy, Amy does not want you to leave. I just want you to know as you get ready to go back to California, there are people who do not want you to leave. All right. Let's get into the question of the day. And I just forgot it. With all the technical difficulty I had sharing, um um Here we go. Here's the question of the day. What is your answer to the question, why are you a Christian? What is your answer to the question, why are you a Christian? And good to see Vantress Jackson today. 
Hello to all of you, she says. Hello, mama. It's good to see you. Uh, Lisa Norwood is speaking for Tracy and saying she will be back soon, y'all. Uh, all right. Answer. Here's the question of the day. Go on here into the comments. While you all are going into the comments, I'm going to catch up on these prayer requests. <clears throat> what is your answer to the question, why are you a Christian? Why are you a Christian? Why? I mean, because I mean, at this point now, you could have chosen to leave Christianity. Uh, you could have chosen another religion. Why are you a Christian? What is your answer to that question? And while you all are answering that question, I am, I'm going to be writing our prayer requests. Michelle Gordon, I have your prayer list. We're answering the question today. If someone asks you, why are you a Christian? And this actually happened to me the other day. Um, <laughs> not to tell all my business, but um, I was at a place called Bag Daddy's, Bad Daddy's. It's a hamburger place. And I sat at the bar because I was getting something to go. Uh, and at the bar, uh, there was a young lady. And I don't know how we ended up talking religion, but she was talking about um I think she said she wasn't a Christian, she was spiritual. And so what I asked her was, I, my question was, oh, okay, and I didn't tell I was a pastor, didn't tell I was a preacher. Uh, my question to her was, well, you know, what, what, what's the foundation of your spirituality? She said, what do you mean? I said, well, what, what, is, your, what is the starting point theologically? What, what, what do you believe in? Uh, what's the foundation of what makes you spiritual? I mean, you have to have some type of center some type of matrix, some type of um, um, core, if you will. What is the foundation of your spirituality? And uh, she began to kind of, I don't think she never thought about it before, which most people, most people who say they're not religious and, not, and, and are spiritual have not thought deeply about their spirituality. They have maybe some practices here, practices there. But when you ask, well, what is the foundation of how you believe in the spirit or spirituality? Do you believe in God? What's the source of your belief in God? You know, people have difficulty answering these questions. So this was my question to the lady at the bar at Bag Daddy. What is the foundation of your spirituality? And so, of course, she answered and she asked, well, what is the foundation of your spirituality? And I'll give you my answer later because I want you all, I still want to tell you, I want you to answer the question, why are you a Christian? Why are you a Christian? All right. Okay. We're still doing our vending with the kids. I love that, Natalie. Uh, I am putting you and your kids and your family on my prayer list. We've got another praise report. Congratulations to my youth to youth member and your granddaughter being selected for color guard dance team. Okay, now Tiana, we're gonna be on the color guard. Where is she going to school? Fayette County? Congratulations to Tiana for making the color guard. So excited. I'm so excited. Thank you, mom, for your prayers, requests. I am getting those now and I have Tina Wright and, and family. And I have the Braggs family. Uh, thank you so much for that prayer request. We're answering this question. What is your answer to this question? Why are you a Christian? Now, y'all, I feel like this is a question where y'all all should kind of be answering, coming left and right. Christian? Why are you a Christian? Why are the, the challenges and the and why are you a Christian? That's what I want to know. That's the question of the day. Why are you a Christian? That's what I want to know. Got to know. Need to know. For all of you who follow this thing we call Christianity, why? Why do you follow it? Why? Why do you still believe? Um, 
this is a, I see a great answer here. I see a great answer here. Let's go ahead and start getting into the answers. Let's go ahead. Give me your answer now. And I want you all to be truthful. I'm going to start with this last answer, though. It's the latest answer. And then I'm going to go to other ones. Because I love this answer because this is a very honest answer. And if most of us would be honest, um, we are, there are reasons, plural, why we're a Christian. And one of the biggest reasons, qualitatively, that we're Christian, we were born into it. We were born into it. And the truth of the matter is, most of us, most of us, although maybe some of us here have who've investigated other religions, but most of us have not done a deep dive into other religions and compared other religions or tried out Islam for a year, tried out Hinduism for a year, tried out Buddhism for a year, and then say, you know what? I've tried these Yoruba religions and African traditional religions um, and come back and say, you know what? After trying all these different religions, I still believe either because of practically some of the practices or theologically some of the God ideas um, that I want to be a Christian. Most of us haven't done this. And so this is why I love this answer. Born and raised a, as a Christian. Never entered my mind that there was an option. Can I, can I co-sign with you, Yolanda? Because a lot of the reason that I am a Christian, not all, but much of the reason that I am a Christian, I was born into it. I was born into it. I've, in, I've not spent no anywhere near the time with any other religion than I have Christianity. This is a very interesting, intriguing answer. That doesn't mean that's the only reason, but we are born and raised as Christians, most of us. And most of us, even if it has entered our mind that there was an option, we've not really seriously investigated any other options. Here we go. Now, y'all know I love this answer. I'm a Christian because it is a religion based on love. Oh, I love it. There's a song. Who sings that? I am a Christian. Do you know what that means? It means I'm far from perfect, simply redeemed. I'm Smokey Norfolk. I love that song. I love that song. I'm born with a purpose. Yes, yeah. Smokey Norfolk. I'm going to listen to that when I get out of here today. Great song, great song, uh, and this is a great answer. I'm a Christian because it is a religion based on love. Evelyn Ellis says, I am confident that there was a person on my planet named Jesus. Regardless of the rest of the story, listen to this. I love the way he lived, and that is enough for me. I like this. I like some of these answers. I like the variety of these answers. I'm a Christian. Because I believe and trust in God and God's his way of thinking for my life. He gave his son so that I could live. I like this. It's a powerful answer. And here's another answer. For those of you who are just coming in, here's the question of the day. What is your answer to this question? Why are you a Christian? If, in fact, there is anybody in who does not consider themselves a Christian, why aren't you a Christian? Why are you whatever you are, whatever you uh, claim to be or uh, or relate to religiously? Let me just tell you how blind I am, y'all. If I don't have these glasses, I can't read these comments. So let me go back to my glasses. Um, why? Here's what Lisa Norwood says. Lisa Norwood says, initially, because I was raised one, born into the church of God in Christ, literally. My God, Lisa, I didn't know this about you. I didn't know you were born Church of God in Christ. I, I've never seen you shout, talk in tongues, take off running. Maybe we're not doing enough in Fellowship of Love. What I got to do to get a good Church of God in Christ shout out of you? My God, I can't. The first time um, I went to Church of God in Christ, I was mortified. Uh, and, 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 and and it's not a bad thing. I was just, it, I was inexperienced. I was green. I had never seen that level of intensity in praise and worship. I don't think I've ever witnessed the, the talking in tongues, the falling on the floor, and the running all at once. Seen somebody probably run before, maybe one person in the church. I maybe seen somebody shout before, maybe one person shout, uh, or a couple people fall out. You know, I've seen the spirit get high in Baptist churches, but I had never seen the level of charismatic praise and worship than when I first time I went to church, God in Christ, and I was mortified. I really, I was scared. I literally was scared and I was suspicious. Now, I'd be perfectly fine in Church of God in Christ Church now. Uh, but my first time, I was a teenager and I was mortified. Uh, didn't know that. Now, because I believe what the Bible says and have had enough 
life experiences to know that they are true. So there's the born reason, I'm born a Christian, uh, the Bible, I believe it, and my life experiences confirm it. I like this answer. Um, Mokalade says, this is all I know. And I haven't considered any other way of life. I like it. I like it. Vantra says, grew up in a strong Christian influence that caused me to want to be a Christian. Um, Dean, uh, let me go back to Lisa Norwood. I like this. I like this. She said, I tried other religions along the way. This is interesting because this is something that most people have not done. I applaud this. I like this. Uh, it's not that everybody needs to do it. I'm not, I'm not prescribing this. I can, I can applaud, beloved, without prescribing. I can appreciate without suggesting everybody else do it. I can appreciate without thinking that it's something that should be a universal thing that we do. And so I, I, I applaud the fact that you've tried other religions along the way, but somehow you went back what felt right and comfortable. You want to share? Just curiosity, Lisa, what are some of these religions? Um, I think I got Vantress. My mama grew up in a strong Christian influence. All oh, Danny May. All oh, Danny May. I know she did grow up in a Christian influence. And, and Monty Arnold. Those are my grandparents, y'all. My mama's parents. Danny May and Arnold and, and Monty Arnold. Um, Dina answers this question. If you're new, we're answering this question. What is your answer to the question, why are you a Christian? Dina says, for me, my first thought, it was because I was born and raised to be a Christian. Then it grew into because I was introduced to God and I built a relationship with God. I grew my faith and I trust in God. I, I like this. I like this. Um, here we go. Here's another answer. My foundation started because I was raised in a Christian home. My grandfather was a minister and we were taught to love God and our fellow man. Uh, I believe what was instilled in me was and still in is true. I, I like this. Um, I like this. Uh, Amy said, I want to take our run a couple of Go on and run, Amy. Go on and run. I dare you one time. Um, this, see, I didn't know this, Lisa. Lisa says she beats the tambourine and talks in tongues. Bring that tambourine one Sunday. Go on and bring it. You know, that's the one of the great things about us not being a domination is that's why it was important to me, even though uh, I've grown up Baptist. And I know Fellowship of Love has a kind of probably a good, a, a pretty much Baptist feel. I do want people to feel uh, encouraged and free to be their spiritual selves. Lisa, I'm just feeling like I'm just having a conversation with you. Here are the religions you've tried. Buddhism, Islam, Judaism. I love this. And you felt comfortable as a Christian. Good afternoon to you, Felicia. It's good to see you, uh, and I'm glad to have you. Um, all right, I think I have our prayer request, and here we go. I want to get into um, I want to get into our question of the day, um, and I want to start by saying this. Um, this actually comes from a series I did. It's on YouTube. If you can find it, but it's called Start with Love. And one of the things that I suggest, and I don't, I want to, get, I won't get into every point of the sermon, uh, but starting points, starting points are important. Starting points are important. Let me give you one example of where starting points help us. Uh, starting points are important. Knowing where we start um, is very important. Is is very important. Starting points help us know how far we've gone. Um, starting points help us. Uh, Dr. Evelyn Ellis, listen to this. Starting points are important uh, because when we get lost so many times, one of the best ways to get directions when we're lost, one of the best ways to find ourselves again when we lost is go back to our starting point. In other words, how many times uh, when you're getting directions and you've been lost, somebody said, well, where did you start? Where did you start? Because so often in knowing where we started, we can, first of all, try to find out where we went wrong. Starting points are important, beloved. Uh, I'm trying to teach a little bit today and help you all understand. I want to begin by just kind of making this claim that starting points are important. Starting points help us find out where we went wrong, right? Starting points, when we get lost, help us to find our way. When we're being given directions before we even leave, 
What's the first thing that's important to know? Where are we going to start? Have you ever gotten an invitation or something that had directions to a different place and it gave you directions based on where you're coming from? Because starting points, beloved, are important. That's what I want to begin. I really do believe as we evaluate and investigate our faith, it's important to know our starting point. Now, two ways we can think about this starting point. The first way is the way we've talked about it. Why is my why? My starting point to Christianity, um, my starting points to Christianity um, is my, I was born and raised. For most of us, our starting point in our own Christian journey is our childhood. We were born into it. We were raised into it. Uh, very few of us were born and raised something else and became Christian, and that's okay. It's also okay for those of us who weren't. But for most of us, our starting point is our Christian faith. But when we start talking about Evelyn Ellis, our theology, our theology, uh, when we start talking about our theology, so often it's important to know where our starting point is. Why is that important, mama? I'll tell you why. Because there's so often we get into these theological debates and we have things that we don't know the answer to. Uh, any religion, any theology, any philosophy has challenges and we can get lost in the muck and the mire of our theological beliefs. I asked my mom and my sisters the other day in a conversation about spirituality, I asked them, can God pick up, make a rock so big that God can't pick it up? I may have asked this question before in this uh, check-in before, but we were talking theology and I was giving them what really is, uh, what really is a theological conundrum. Can God make a rock so big that God can't pick it up? And I think my mom's first answer was, yes, of course, God can do anything. I said, well, if God can do that, then God can do something that can then cause limits on God. If God can make a rock so big that God can't pick it up, then, then there is something God cannot do. And that's pick up the rock that God made that was too big. If God can't make a rock too big that God can't pick it up, then God can't do something because humans, we can make things so big that we can't pick them up. We do it all the time. We make houses. We can't pick up houses. We make cars. We can't pick up cars. We make uh, homes. Uh, we make apartment buildings. We can't pick up apartment buildings. We make church buildings. We can't pick up church buildings. And so I gave my mom and them this theological conundrum, this philosophical brain teaser. Can God make a rock so big that God can't pick it up? Now, I'm just going to shelve that. I don't have an answer for you. We're not going to try to get into the deep philosophical ideas. But the point was, the point was, at some point, our theology sometimes hits a wall where we don't have an answer. I thought about this because I saw a Facebook post that asked about Adam and Eve and Cain and Abel and how we populated the world with just Adam and Eve and Cain and Abel. Let me see if I can find it for you all. I shouldn't take too long. Um, it was a post. Let me see. Da, 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 da. Here we go. The post said, if God created Adam and Eve, how did they populate the world with only two sons? So people started to give ever answers, tried to get Bible answers, literal answers about, you know, um, um, Adam and Eve having more than two sons. They had daughters. And so the questions became, was there incest? Because if Adam and Eve are the only parents of the world, um, then, then how do we populate the world? And was there incest? And here's a deeper question. If there was incest then, then would God then find it okay for brothers and sisters to have sex with each other and have children now? Like what? When was it all right for there to be incest? Do y'all see this big hole? At some point, when you listen to the creation story, as we've been told it, the Adam and Eve version, we let hit a wall that kind of at least to some degree problematizes some of our faith beliefs. Um, and it began to dawn on me that as a Christian, when I get lost in this muck and in this minutia of theological questions, biblical problems, philosophical conundrums, then for me, it's important 
to have a starting point. For me, my starting point is also my why. Why am I a Christian? Why am I still a Christian? I can remember being in an argument with my sister about the different religions and uh, she pressing me and pushing me on whether Christianity was the original religion of humanity or are there older religions and Christianity evolved out of those. And what I told her was, um, I don't care. I, I don't care if Christianity is the first religion because chronological primacy or Christianity being historically the first religion is not my why. And it's not my starting point. Am I helping someone? I'm trying to give you all at least an understanding of why I think understanding your starting point in your theology and your Christianity is important. Because if you don't know your starting point, oftentimes you do not know the anchor, the anchor to your religious beliefs. I think it's important to think about your theological starting point. It's also important when we get into these theological debates, what does God believe about abortion? What does God believe about different sexual lifestyles and alternative lifestyles? What does God believe about our gay and lesbian brothers and sisters? What does God believe about our transgender and um, our brothers and sisters? Um, how, what, how, how do we answer these theological questions? And I really believe when we start getting into deep theological questions, was Jesus fully God? And if Jesus was fully God, then, then how could he have human limitations of a body? How could his body have a corruptible body? Those are questions, the Trinitarian questions that really uh, calls for deep reflection. And when people, is the Bible true? And if the Bible is not always true, then how can we uh, have a rock solid belief in Christianity when for many of us, the Bible, the Bible becomes the source of our Christianity. Is the Bible your starting point for your Christianity? And if it is your starting point, then what did the Christians for the first 300 and 400 years of Christianity do before there was the Bible as we know it? Starting points are important. You ought to think about your theological starting point. What is your theological starting point? And here's what I want to tell you. I really believe that for me, I can't tell you what your starting point, but I can tell you what my starting point is. My starting point for Christianity is love. For me, any healthy Christian talk, any healthy theological talk, any healthy theological decision that I make, any healthy theological belief for me has to start with love. Now, I get that starting point from the Bible. The Bible, believe it or not, is not my starting point. Love is. And I want to point to a scripture that takes me there. Why is it, Pastor B.A. Jackson, that you will come on this check-in and say something so ridiculous, so outrageous, so preposterous, so um, um, heretical as the Bible is not your starting point. But I want to suggest that I get the idea of my starting point from the Bible, even though the Bible is not my starting point. My starting point is love. Here's where I get my starting point. The Bible says in Matthew 20, the 22nd chapter, in Matthew, the 22nd chapter, when the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, I'm in Matthew chapter 22, verses 34 through 40. In fact, let me go ahead and give you this um, so you can know where I am. Nope. Nope. 
Matthew 22, 34 through 40. When the Pharisees and this herd um, that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, mama. And one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. They're testing Jesus as they often did on Jesus's theology, his bibliology. And the question becomes, I mean, he, there's no Bible then. So teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? And Jesus says to them, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Paul's right there. I want to stop because that at alone does not give us our starting point, although it does suggest that what Jesus believed is the most important point about the law. The most important law, the greatest law, are both laws about the law to and law of love. Unquestionably, unashamedly, uh, uh, admittedly, what Jesus says when he's asked, what is the greatest commandment? You have to remember, Jesus is in a law-based religion. Jesus says, the greatest commandment is love. Jesus establishes in Matthew 22 that for Jesus, what's most important in the law is love. For me, as great as those scriptures are, the 40th verse, mama, blows my mind because he says something that revolutionizes and reforms how I think about Christian religion. Now he says, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. And you shall love your neighbor as you love yourself. Three loves, if you're a member of Fellowship of Love, this is no, um, this is no shock to any of you. Um, but three loves there, love God, love others, love yourself. Love God, love others, love yourself. Jesus says, this is the greatest commandment. But here's what he says in verse 40 that blows my mind and I'll leave you alone. On these two commandments, Michelle Gordon, hang all the law and all the prophets. Now you have to remember at this point, there is no Bible. The two sources of theology at this time are law and prophets. This is their Bible, so to speak. The two sources of how they think about their spirituality are the law and the prophets. And what Jesus says is that these two sources hang on the law of love. In other words, the starting point for Jesus is love. The law trying to point us to love. The prophets trying to point us to love. And so whenever I get lost theologically, and whenever I don't know the answer to every biblical challenge, whenever I can't answer every philosophical challenge, I go back to my starting point. Just when I get lost on a map, if I get lost and I'm driving, and sometimes I have to go back to where I'm starting, because where I start, there's safety there. Where I start, there's clarity there. Where I start, there's refuge there. Where I start, there's confidence there. Evelyn Ellis, whenever I've gotten lost, I might not know when I got started making turns and going down the highway, but I did know where I start. Here's a good another way to talk about the start. I know where my home is. Where my home is, if I don't know anywhere else, I know how to get home. And my home is where I refuel. My home is where I love the most. My home is where I am loved. My home is a refuge. And here's my question today. You ought not leave this check-in without at least thinking about 
What is your theological home? What matters to you in your theology more than anything else in the world? And I'm not telling you to take mine. I'm not telling you to take Jesus's. But what I am telling you is, if you are going to have a strong faith, you need a starting point. If you are going to have a strong belief system, you need a home of your theology, a home of your spirituality, a home and a foundation of what you think, a home of where you believe we what you believe we ought to do. That's what I'm trying to teach and tell someone today. It's good to have a starting point. And what I want to suggest today is that here is a good Jesus-like starting point. If ever you have any doubt about some Christian fact, if ever you have any doubt about the rigors or the rightness of the Bible, if ever you have any doubt about who, how many disciples there were, if ever you have any doubt about philosophy or theology, if ever you can't answer questions about the Trinity or sin, if ever you don't know what God thinks about some social issue or political issue, then what I want to tell you is get out of the muck and the mire and find you a good starting point. And I want to offer a starting point that I think was Jesus' starting point. Jesus says, love God, love your neighbor, and love yourself. And if ever, anything else gets murky, if anything else gets unclear, if anything else gets vague, then hang your hat on the same hat as the law and the prophets, and that is the hat of love. That's why I choose so many of my beliefs. That's why I love straight people and gay people. That's why I love and try to love black people and white people. That's why I try to love rich people and poor people. That's why I try to love Democrats and Republicans, because in the end, I believe my spirituality and my theology is nothing without love. There's a scripture for that. If I have not love, then my life is like what? Clanging cymbals. I like that text. I like that scripture. And that's how I want to help somebody today. I just want to help someone theologically. I want to help someone philosophically. I want to help someone the next time someone tries to challenge your Christianity, your faith, your belief system. Listen, when they began to ask me, do you believe Jesus rose? There's evidence about his resurrection. Here's what I tell him. If he rose literally or if he didn't rise, he pointed me to love. Here's what I tell him. If you can prove that some of the Bible is scientifically untrue, you cannot prove that love is not effective. The Bible is not my starting point. The metaphysical constitution of Jesus is not my starting point. The rightness of every scripture is not my starting point. My starting point is love. Because I believe if everything else fails, love still wins. If everything else falls, love still stands. If everything else falters, love still stabilizes. If everything else crumbles, love still keeps us whole. When things break us down, love fixes us. When things bring us down, love picks us up. When things shut us out, love brings us in. When things forget about us, love remembers us. And I don't know how you feel about it, but I'm glad that in Matthew chapter 22, Jesus said, if you don't remember one rule, if you don't remember one commandment, if you don't remember any law, if you don't remember any sermon, if you don't remember any any pastor, remember to love. Start, beloved. Start with love. If ever you get lost, theologically, if ever you get lost, factually, if ever you get lost, philosophically, in the Christian minutia and the deep questions that we sometimes pose to God, here it is. Start with love. Every head bowed, every eye closed, every heart praying. God, we love you, we honor you, we bless you today. We thank you for who you are. We thank you for what you've done and we thank you for what you're doing. God, we thank you for this ability to gather together 
and to check in and to attend to our spirit. You told us in your scripture to love the Lord God with all our heart, with all our mind, and with all our soul. We thank you today, God, that you helped us to think more and think deeply about you. We thank you today, God, that you've helped us to love you with our mind. I believe we've thought deeply today, God, and I believe we'll continue to think deeply. And I believe that we are called to love. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for Jesus. Thank you, God, for the Bible that gives us so many testimonies and, and, and testaments about Jesus. And I thank you for this scripture in Matthew 22, where Jesus was back into a corner and asked, what is the greatest commandment? And Jesus came out of that corner saying, love. And God, finally, that's what I want you to do. Help us to love better. Help us to love ourselves better. Help us to love others better. God, help us to love you better. God, I thank you for all the people that we've shown love for today, who are on our heart and in our spirit, people that we've called by name. And so, God, today I want to lift up Tina Wright and family, and I want to lift up the Braggs family. I want to lift up Nevin, Ariel, Aaron, and Natalie Jackson. I lift the kids up as they start a new vending journey. May you continue to anoint them, cover them, God, and prosper them. I pray for Paris Jones, Lakia Jones, Kelly Meadow, Michael Meadow, Brian Gordon, and Michelle Gordon and family today. I pray for Boyd Harris, Tian Howard, Tiana McBride, Belinda Washington, and Antonio Cowherd as they recover pray for Amy Cowherd. I pray for Juan Carlos and Heather Manley and James Simons and Lauren Murray and Sonia Johnson-Clark and Joy Treadwell and John Beatty and Ruthie Prophet, Samuel Perry, Tracy Blackwell, and James Walker. For every name I've called, God, I pray that you would touch. For every name that I call, God, I pray that you would deliver. For every name that I've called, I pray that you would set free. And then, God, I want to close this prayer by simply saying thank you. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for what you are. Thank you for what you do in our lives. God, we love you today. We honor you today. And we bless you today. And we pray this prayer in the loving, liberating, and life-giving name of Jesus. Amen. Amen, 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 beloved. I want to thank you for joining us here today. And I check in. I hope y'all will be joining us this Sunday at 10 a.m. at Fellowship of Love Church. Uh, you can join us in person or you can join us virtually. And as we go to our many different destina <laughs> destinations, I want to touch and agree with you. And so, Amy, I'm touching and agreeing with you. Uh, Michelle and Evelyn, I'm touching and agreeing with you. Lisa Norwood, I'm touching and agreeing with you. Yolanda Ellis Taylor, I'm touching and agreeing with you. Listen, Mama, I'm touching and agreeing with you. And Felicia, I'm touching and agreeing with you. And all of you, I'm touching and agreeing with you and hoping the best for your weekend until we meet again. Please remember, I'm touching and agreeing with you, Lisa Gonzalez. Please remember to live in love. You all have a great day and have a great weekend.